Hello and welcome to day two of uh, Rule of the Waves EU. Uh, tonight we start with uh, the knockout stages of the competition. Uh, this is a double elimination match, so each team has to lose at least twice to be knocked out of the game. Uh, first up, we have UKRF versus LGR and uh, our map is Trident Domination. Uh, LGR have uh, brought in a couple of changes from yesterday I believe. Uh, today they have Averoff and Redbeard GR. That's a dangerous player to look out for. Marcus switching from the Black Leander uh, to an Arizona and in UKRF's team, we see General Osric take the place of Mira. He's playing the Sirius. So, they drop the Grimiashi, bring in a Sirius. Uh, the two battleships, uh, Normandy versus Repulse, Andrea Doria versus um, the Greek Repulse. Um, interesting these ships are geared for speed rather than to slug it out let's see what strategy both teams employ uh, from what it looks like uh, UKRF are taking a standard A and C approach where they will seek to block the enemy at C, perhaps take a cheeky uh, cap at B, but uh, their overwhelming force uh, is going to B and is looking to knock out uh, the Makarov, the Molotov and uh, the Galant, whatever they can, but uh, I, I would think that they'll prioritize these two Russian cruisers first. Chrissy Boy in the Black Fushun takes an immediate double salvo from these two cruisers, very accurately done, and uh, he's down to 50% almost immediately. But those torpedoes that he's launched uh, will prevent uh, Marcus from using his guns effectively and they will push back Termitus even if he doesn't take the cap. Meanwhile, uh, the UKRF uh, cruisers are, as predicted, prioritizing the Makarov instead of the DD right in front of them. That, I feel, is a mistake. Uh, I think Grosser Bruder uh, switching to the Gallant but uh, using HE for some reason instead of AP. Now he's switched over to the AP. Good move. Uh, probably running sonar so he but he still takes a torp a couple of torps and a hit from the Molotov. He's out for the count. I'm guessing he'll go down. Yes he does. Uh, UKRF are in a bad position right now they've lost control of all three caps uh, they're shipped down and they are being pressed from all sides mr cakes at 50 percent health uh, but uh, he's not too worried about it uh, i think the doria wg has to make an aggressive play here even if uh, he loses a lot of hp and needs to take out this cruiser and the Trento as well. Can he do that? Uh, Grievous goes down to the Makarov. Um, that's good play from LGR. They've taken down uh, two very hard hitting cruisers and uh, the Makarov takes one torpedo, loses a rudder not really a big deal 
because they've overwhelmed this flank. Uh, Stormbird fighting a tough rear guard action, but uh, I think it's safe to say that uh, LGR are in, are in the ascendancy. Ooh. I think uh, at this point, the Andrea Doria will also go down. And uh, we can give this round to LGR, who've outthought and outplayed the UKRF completely. It all started with uh, that one torp move from uh, the Gallant uh, here, and that opened up space for the cruisers to push. It gave uh, the Republic and the Nuremberg something to think about when, and while they were busy they got overwhelmed. So good move from Redbeard. Termite is taking uh, out Lord Nelson and now it's just Storm and Chrissy Boy left. Those torps look interesting. Uh, Chris might have a hard time until he switches on the engine accelerator and boosts out. Um, but he's facing a, a great DD player in the Gallant might not be a fight he wishes to take. I forget, uh, I think the Black Fushun gets radar, uh, he might have used it previously, so anyway, it's uh, a moot point because there's not much he can do. And a brilliant victory from LGR to take this one. Good game, Termitus. Uh, let's pause this video for a few seconds till we get to our second round. Okay, so this is our second uh, round. Uh, straight domination um, this is interesting because uh, both sh uh, teams have a 4 versus 3 situation oh, well, right in front of them uh, A and C are both divided um, in such a way that uh, the two battleships of both teams are across the map from each other so it, it'll be interesting to see whether these ships uh, go straight for the cap or do they think the better of it and switch over and try to take B. If I were in UKRF's position, I would have not uh, done this. I, I would have moved the two cruisers and possibly even the, the DD over to B. This is not a fight and this is not a group I want to take on. LGR have quickly seized control of both the caps. The Sirius coming under heavy fire from uh, both the Makarov and the Molotov. And he takes, he's going to take a couple of torpedoes. Oh, narrowly avoids them. Uh, so UKRF are taking hold of C. Uh, meanwhile, their um, battle group of the two cruisers and the DD have been pushed out of cap. Uh, Nelson is trying to f fight and retreat at the same time. That's not the way to go, man. Uh, you have two guns at the back. You should be uh, playing ass first, as uh, many players call it. He's going to get pinned down, and uh, I don't think this is the right move by Nelson. But uh, let's see if um, he can make it work. 
Meanwhile, LGR have taken B, and the Gallant continues spawn, uh, spamming torps uh, without any opposition from any uh, of the cruisers. He'll take the game away from uh, UKRF if they aren't careful. They need to eliminate him as quickly as possible. Uh, the two cruisers of LGR, they're in low health, but they have uh, taken good positions. Uh, Termitus withdrawing and uh, the Makarov just is quiet. He's just sitting there undetected, uh, not venturing out. He's using the island protection really well. Uh, Termitus goes down. So first blood to UKRF. Uh, but uh, let's see if they can make it count. Uh, as of right now, I think LGR are still the favorites in this. Uh, that situation might change. Chrissy Boy goes down. That was predictable. Uh, again, Nelson should be focusing. All right. He shouldn't be because that is already a done deal. Uh, Mario in the Black Fusion has quietly, you know, played his game unopposed pretty much, taken some damage from the Nuremberg, but now he's in a position where he can really punish this war spite who is just sitting there stationary and has. Uh, the potential to be spammed by torps. He avoids those torpedoes by moving forward. But what will he do about those uh, st uh, straight fire torps that Redbeard is pushing out? Of course, they'll be detected early by uh, General Grievous, but Storm still takes f four torpedoes. I, I think th those were unnecessary. Uh, LGR control two caps now, uh, but uh, they've taken the points lead. But uh, the problem is that they are they've practically lost Lord Nelson. Uh, what he should be doing is try to go undetected. Ooh, Molotov takes down the Makarov and puts pressure on LGR. That's interesting now uh grosser bruder should turn in and start fighting and you know making life hell for the two dds who just run around unopposed that is not how cruisers should be played still ukrf have a healthy points lead they have control of two caps and they i think they will find a way to win this uh, Bruder, um, sorry Nelson still doesn't uh, you know go dark he's hell-bent on killing the Trento perhaps with the help of the Nuremberg they can bring this uh, cruiser down war spite taking down um, the DD and uh, yeah so all sorts of action happening but uh, UKRF have a healthy lead at this point and it's only a minute to go. Uh, the repulse will go down, it's a soft ship, uh, no match in a slugging duel against a war spite. And especially if that war spite is backed up by a Doria who is just steaming in angry probably has SAP loaded and wants to finish off this Galant because the Galant is uh, smoked up WG loads uh, fires a salvo at uh, the repulse almost manages to take him out and the uh, question is will he take some torpedoes before the clock runs out Nice recovery by the Bananas, they've uh, played an, a good match and 
recovered from 1-0 down and now it's 1-1. Our next match will be the tiebreaker. Good game, WG. All right, let's pause here and let's wait for the third one. Okay, so we have round three of... Actually, we have the third match of uh, this round between UKRF and uh, LGR. A little bit of tinkering going on. Averov switches over to a Shinin Nomi. And uh, that's an interesting choice. Three DBs from LGR. Just the one from UKRF. Now, uh, we've been seeing uh, Golden Channel quite a few times. I'd love to see General Grievous uh, go somewhere here and uh, take this island. That gives him protection from incoming fire and he can uh, with, utilize his range to make life uncomfortable from here to here. Uh, but I believe Termitus has the same idea and he wants to take this side of the island and do exactly the same thing to um, UKRF. LGR, because of their 3 DDs, have taken the early cap and uh, they're not even bothering to push uh, their battleships into this cap. Rather, the battleships are taking a flanking maneuver. Ooh, but the black fusion in the in the center, uh, Redbeard, has taken some heavy damage. Uh, UKRF taking, uh, trying to take the cap. Uh, Redbeard has to withdraw, get out of uh, the firing line. He's being uh, backed up by the Shinonomi, who spams a few torps just to deny the area to Molotov and uh, the Doria. I don't know if the Doria has a torp screen. No, he doesn't. Uh, he will take quite a few of these. And he's getting focused. WG will go down to the torps of the Shinonomi. First blood to LGR and uh, the position that they are in, I think uh, they've taken the game pretty much just by this move. Grievous finally taking uh, the island. Uh, he's chasing Termitus, which renders both of these ships obsolete. Uh, Grievous in a Sirius chasing a Molotov isn't a smart move. The Sirius, especially in a long range duel, will suffer against the Molotov's superior firepower. If only Termitus could aim a little better. down and I think uh, in the next 10 seconds we are about to see another thing. There you go. Storm goes down. Uh, UKRF have no response. Uh, they've lost both their battleships. The cruisers are fighting valiantly but uh, <coughs> they can't do much against this overwhelming onslaught. And they lose their third kill as well. The Black Fusion but played by Chrissy Boy also goes down. Does uh, Redbeard survive this? I don't think he will. Oh, that is close. He has all the luck today. Wasting time uh, of these cruisers while the enemy pushes. Smart move by Redbeard. He goes down, but his death will be will not be in vain. Makarov takes a strong salvo from the Trento. 
and as predicted, the Sirius loses his duel to the Molotov. UKRF uh, were all over the place, their strategy just uh, didn't work. Ostrich fighting till the bitter end, he's trying to take a kill, any kill, but uh, I don't know if LGR will give up another kill at this point. Even Redbeard cost UKRF a heavy penalty by, you know, being so hard to kill. So Bruder's uh, engine is knocked out and he's dead. Dead in the water and now dead in the game as well. There we go. End of the line for UKRF. At least in the winner's bracket, now they have to drop down to the loser's bracket. That's our first match done. Uh, let's uh, pause this video and resume uh, when we start our next match. So we have uh, our second match. Uh, it's the winner's bracket uh, round two. Uh, it is a sales versus windy windy have a sales player in their team Vitara, while um, and he's I don't need to tell you how good he is in battleships uh, they have a Novorossiya which is the first time I've seen that ship in this tourney uh, a Makarov Leipzig Anshan Duka Deosta, Fushun, and Andrea Doria up against uh, LTK in his Nuremberg, uh, Malta in the Makarov, Otopi in the Galant, uh, Louis plays the Friedrich, Leipzig played by Edwin, Mackinson, an interesting choice by P Man, and Syncopa in the Ansha. So, no Austria tonight for sales and a sales player playing for a windy i wonder what the feed chat will look like at the end of this series of matches so if everybody's ready let's go Two very very strong teams up against each other. They're two of the favorites, along with the uh, UKRF Circus, of course, and LGR, who have proved that they are no pushovers. Tutti ai posti di combattimento. Uh, let's take a look at Windy first. Uh, they're moving two battleships. Uh, the cruiser will take uh, the cap at B. Caspax uh, in the Makarov, he breaks off from uh, the formation of the Anshan and the Leipzig, who are going to play the rabbit role at A. They'll take the cap and uh, engage that DD, but uh, they won't be too bothered if uh, that cap falls. Their primary motivation is to overwhelm the enemy at C, which is uh, right now Syncopa. Uh, both teams following roughly the same pattern. Uh, the exception is that Louis, instead of making his way uh, towards A, and uh, now Philip Man as well, so Lord's changing up from their usual style of play. Let's see if it works out for them. Uh, 
those drops look interesting but uh, i think corbin will break off and won't take any meanwhile uh, windy have quietly taken b caspax not using his guns staying undetected just taking that cap and disappearing he's going to uh, position himself somewhere here so he's relatively pr protected and can start working over the gallant if he gets the opportunity uh, ltk in the nuremberg charging in he's his job is to push out the enshan uh, we're going to see a knife fight between zinger who's going to take uh, a couple of torpedoes and now single fire torps maybe that is enough to finish the job if not uh, definitely the nuremberg can finish him there you go beautiful teamwork and excellent shot calling from syncopa now syncopa will run over to b uh, he'll try to take the cap he takes a, a bit of fire no big deal uh, quietly just takes the cap while his teammates are doing the same for a so sails in control of all three caps uh, their two battleships are finally in a position uh, they're pushing on philip man who has taken a chunk of damage who will take two torpedoes for sure uh, no he doesn't he only takes one avoids the other the fight here is between the Novorossiya the Eitel and the Duca di Osta and this battle group of four ships Gleb in the Fushun takes back control of B and uh, he smokes up um Nuremberg will try to get into sonar range he's too clever to take too many of those torps if any uh, beautiful torp evasion only takes one goes back to engage Gleb in a blood rush and might end up taking a couple a torpedo from the Makarov and that might just be enough to knock him out. Kaspax in the Makarov taking down LTK. Uh, now he needs to reverse and get to work along with the Leipzig on the Makarov. The Makarov will kill one of these two ships. Actually he might end up killing both of them. Otopi in the Gallant takes Kaspax down. The Leipzig has doesn't have enough health. Fushun goes down as well. Sales have taken the lead here in both in terms of ships and in terms of uh, kills. Wonderful fight from Sales using their big match experience to fight off a determined windy team excellent job edwin goes down not that it matters a lot blaze will take the scorps um, the next salvo on blaze will end up killing him and uh, Syncopa is coming in for the kill. Maybe Syncopa takes torps. Torpedoed by a cruiser. I'm sure Syncopa isn't too happy about that one. I don't know if it was a tactical move to finish off uh, Blaze or whether it was just blood rush but uh, I know as a DD player it's a major insult to get torpedoed especially by a cruiser.
Philip man who's taken all that punishment still found a way to stay alive and that's the mark of a great BB player. Louis will put his auto secondaries, his secondaries, his main guns to work, make short work of the Novorossiya who's a good sniper ship but uh, cannot stand up to uh, abuse and uh, maybe he'll find a way to survive this by sneaking behind that island. Yep. So that was an epic duel. Uh, let's pause here and uh, wait for the next one. I hope it's just as good as this one okay so we move on to uh, round two of this prize fight between two heavyweight teams just a little bit of tinkering from both sides and I'm sure some sharp words in the windy corner uh, Vitara sticking with his Nobrus here I would have thought that, uh, but uh, Blaze switching over to a Doria. I believe now his job is to be a DD hunter. Uh, meanwhile, both teams. Oh, Otopi has switched over to an Avier. Uh, he'll probably try to make use of the speed to take the caps and engage that Fushun in a fist fight. That's a fight that the Fushun can never win. Even if he has some help from uh, the Andrea Doria who takes a snipe shot at the Avier. Let's see what damage he does. But the Novo Russia also takes a pot shot pushes the Avier out uh, the cap belongs to Windy for the moment Syncopa is engaged in a duel Anshan versus Anshan I'm sure Zinger is not too pleased with himself uh, after the last match's performance so he's out for some revenge Windy for the moment hold all three of the caps, uh, but that can change very quickly. Uh, sales taking back control of C and B very quickly. Uh, Windy are playing too defensive for me. Uh, they should be playing a little more aggressive especially uh, when it comes to hunting down the cruisers maybe this uh, Duca Diosta was not a good choice but Trento could have uh, done a better job courtesy of its smoke but uh, it is what it is. Some torps by the Fushun, by Gleb. Let's see if they find their mark on the Mackinson. No, they don't. P Man saw those a long time ago. That guy can smell torpedoes. Otopi taking some shots. He's getting pushed out. This match, as I said, is a knockout brawl between two heavyweight teams. Uh, both teams contesting caps and switching caps over and over. But uh, sales have withdrawn completely from me, uh, leaving that Andrea Doria and the Duca Diosta with not a lot of priority targets. Uh, they do have some very low health ships licking their wounds right at the back let's see if 
uh, when do you want to finish those off or want to engage these two full health BBs and that DD that's uh, waiting from, for them here. Meanwhile, the Novorus here fighting in reverse, he's targeting the Doria and gets him with a nice salvo. Not enough to take him out, of course, but uh, still makes his presence known. Philip Mann being pushed to one side by those torps. That slows him down and forces him to change directions. Ooh, Caspax goes down to Louis. That's an interesting one. What about that shot from the door here? I, I feel that SAP salvo could have been much better used on the Anshan, which is quietly taking this cap unopposed. Wow, what a fight we have on our hands. 225 to, to 208 points. Not a lot in this. Uh, but Zinger will go down. LTK goes down to the Doria. Zinger goes down to the Fushun. I think uh, the next kill takes this. The Makarov makes his presence known takes down fan in the duca Oster. the anshan finally is put down but uh, at this point windy have lost too many ships and have failed to finish off the low health ships that uh, sales have i think we can give this match to sales unless windy pull out some sort of a miracle here blaze has the chance to be the hero if he takes down these two dds it might be a whole different ball game windy of course still have the points lead but uh, and they have the two cap advantage but how long will that last Uh, Vitara, finish off that Avia. Nice job, man. Blaze is actively hunting the Fushun. And even if Vitara goes down, if Vitara goes down, this match might have a completely different dynamic. But uh, those torps look good on the Doria. He will go down. Yes, he does. Windy take this against all odds right at the very end. What an epic, epic match that was. Good game, Vitara. Okay, we go to another knockout situation here. Uh, winner of this match progresses to the winner's bracket final so there's everything to pay for uh, I'm not even going to try to make predictions here because these two teams have proved that they are uh, equally matched and one second's moment of brilliance or a small mistake a slip up can cost uh, the match so uh, windy sending a strong force up to a uh, they'll encounter nunberg ltk who can already sense something and is instead of capping he's going to play the rabbit try to use this island here shield himself and play with his rear guns uh, zinger in the anshan faces off against syncopa again for the third time let's see if he gets the better of him this time uh, louis switching back to the prince eitel
so uh, Makarov and the Doria seeing the bulk of the enemy force coming towards them have decided the better of uh, trying to take that cap or hold it they're just quietly going to reverse and run as quickly as possible this has the potential to be a very hairy situation um, Philip Mann running his sonar still takes a couple of torpedoes gets a flood puts it out uh, but uh, no major harm done Meanwhile, B is being capped, but at what cost? Zinger will go down to Philip Mann's excellent shooting there. Now, LTK is still hiding at the corner of the map. He's playing the ninja role. He's going to now take this opportunity because uh, Windy are preoccupied to come into cap, take A and steam forward in support of his teammates from the other side. Syncopa living dangerously as ever uh, in his smoke. He pops out for a bit, thinks the better of it, slides back in and goes into concealment, launches those torpedoes. Then even if they don't hit they're going to force the enemy dds to take up positions that they really don't want to. or they might even catch vitara unaware no we ran out of steam well before that okay So LTK's attempt at capping has been blocked by Fan, but Fan just doesn't have the HP to get into a trading deal with the Nuremberg, especially with the Nuremberg's great guns. So sales in control of Alpha and Charlie. Bravo is still being fought bravely by both of these teams. Uh, Corbin trying his best to hold on to B despite some amazing uh, focus fire from the Mackinson and the Gallant uh, ooh, the, Gala uh, the Gallant takes a heavy beating from the Doria I believe he's forced to back off and go into hiding but uh, sales in control of three caps now and not a lot they can do the black fusion is living life on the edge and so is fan meanwhile caspax in the corner virtually playing the same game that uh, the notebook was a little while ago but he's been pinned down by firepower of Philip Mann and even that Leipzig who just won't let him breathe I think you know uh, the road the Nova Russia isn't such a wise choice in this uh, particular type of a match you need something with uh, a little more firepower I'd say um, and a tougher armor certainly uh, black is mild would have been a better choice hmm. excellent team play there from sales who've latched onto all three caps they're not going to let this slip they have a huge points lead which is only growing bigger every second that passes. I think this time we can safely give this match to Sales who have outplayed and Corbin finally goes down. 
40 seconds to go there's not a lot that uh, separated these two teams over the last three matches uh, except for this particular match where sales just pulled every trick they know in the book and uh, out thought and outplayed the opposition Last minute fireworks there, but uh, no more kills to report. Very interesting matchup. Uh, that concludes uh, this particular um, video. Uh, the next matches in the losers bracket will be in uh, part two of the series. Thank you for watching and don't forget to watch the second part as well.